So today what we're doing is fixing a Korg PA2X Pro. A bunch of the LEDs are burnt out on it and I've already replaced uh, the LEDs on the left hand panel with all the faders. Um, I'm going to be replacing the right side currently. So right now I have the keyboard open. It is very easy to open. It's on a hinge mechanism. Uh, you have three Allen bolts on the bottom here, which basically make the whole keyboard tilt up. And that's on each side. They're underneath the wood trim. And all the black bolts on the, all the black screws on the bottom of the keyboard need to come out. When that happens, basically the keyboard opens up like this and you have this uh, this feet right here. So we'll take a look at it a little bit further. This is the right hand panel. It has the jog wheel and this is the left hand panel right here it has the backup battery and it also has all the faders so let's look at that on the bottom here so, that. so I'm going to be showing you how to remove the uh, right hand board and uh, basically how to solder the LEDs so first we'll take out this cable right here. It joins the two boards together and you can plug it in on the other side. In your keyboard, it will be plugged in to both uh, boards. And then you just want to remove uh, whichever side you're going to be working on. Then we're going to be moving here to the uh, right side. There is a ribbon cable here, which connects the PCM module that you can remove that and just pops off like that then there is another cable right here that cable um, is the power that is going to basically this board right here somewhere and I believe it is this brown and blue wire right there so that powers the jog wheel And then we have one last connector right here, um, which is the jog wheel itself. So after we do that, there's actually one more connector right here. And that connects the crossfader to the module. And that's it for connectors. It's pretty simple. So we'll set up the camera here again. Like that. Sorry for the unstable video here. Trying to get as much covered as possible. There we go. So we need a Phillips screwdriver. I like to use a ratcheting screwdriver just because it's much faster to get rid of all the bolts. They are in these aluminum strips which go all the way across board and sometimes when they are stiff the ratcheting mechanism really helps so you don't get uh, you don't get any carpal tunnel syndrome in your hands so once we remove all the bolts on the board and the screws there's quite a lot of them. I put them right here inside the uh, rails that I've screwed into, just so I don't lose any. The jog wheel you don't need to remove. It's just the one PCB board. And for a while, Korg International covered this. 
under warranty, but I recently called in to get it warranty and they would not send the boards out. They don't manufacture them anymore because as of currently the PA4X is out. So we're two versions behind. So the reason this happens is I think that they use the wrong resistors on the circuit board. So if you can try to get maybe different color LEDs than blue that take around 25 to 30 milliamps of current to light instead of 20. Um, the 20s usually burn out a lot faster. I've replaced them already once, but this is all I could get currently at uh, my location. So let's take a look at all we've done here. So I removed all the screws from the PCB board and we have this plate which attaches to the bottom uh, frame through this hole right there. Now we need to remove this plate. It has three screws, one screw right there and two right there. So we'll take a look at that and remove it right now. See if I can get this ruined key out of the way so you guys can see. It's a little bit better. I'll be moving everything in front of the camera. Once I have the PCB out. And last screw, holding the board down. And we can place that in there. So right now, we should be able to pull the board out quite easily. It is also held down by the jog wheel, so you might have to pry it out like that a little bit and grab the PCB board like that. Put that off to the side, we just dropped one button and it is from the crossfader. Now, that button on the crossfader basically does not um, does not matter. It uh, it basically pops in at the end, so we'll just leave it on the side right there. We have all the buttons. Let's take a look at that. How the buttons look like inside. You don't want to uh, lose any of these. And then here's the re retainer or the uh, dust guard um, for the fader, the cross fader. That's right there. Just take a look at it again. Now, a good thing to do is to write down beforehand what LEDs do not work. What I like to do is, when I'm looking at the board uh, with the keyboard closed, basically um, you have it like this. Um, it's gonna present itself like this on the, when you're looking at it. So what I like to do is, let's orient the camera here so we can see what we're doing. Once again, like that. What I like to do is number my rows. So this is row one, row two, row three, and then row four. Um, and then I number my LEDs left to right, basically, and keep that on a piece of paper right next to me. That way I don't replace uh, LEDs that I don't need to. All right, now we're gonna pause a little bit um, just so I can get that uh, list of numbers that I need and we'll come back.